So I've been asked to do a video on who my preferred manager is now that the top three managers in the world, in my opinion, currently, uh, Angelotti, Mourinho and Pep Guardiola are all available. Now it's looking highly likely that Louis van Gaal will get sacked, which is great because I don't think he's done the job that he promised. All right, I'm grateful for what he's done, particularly last season, but he just hasn't... He hasn't um, kind of sparked up, he hasn't improved this season in my opinion. So yeah, I'll be happy if he does get sacked and hopefully that will happen soon. Now, before Mourinho was available, the favourite that I wanted was Pep Guardiola. And I still stand by that. But the problem is now that obviously you've got Manchester City interest, you've got Chelsea interest as well, I would have thought. And you've got to wait six months, which means you would either have to keep Louis van Gaal get an interim manager or hire gigs until the end of the season. I don't really like any of those three options. Now, my opinion has changed wholeheartedly since Mourinho has became available. He is my number one choice. And I'm telling you now, if Angelotti, Pep Guardiola and Mourinho were all available right now, I would still take Jose Mourinho. And there's many reasons for that, all right? You look at his record. He's only 53. That was the same age that Ferguson won his first title at United, I think. Also... Um, he's won 23 trophies in 15 years in four different countries. He's the only one to do it in four different countries. That is exceptional. He is a proven winner. There's these uh, myths that he's a very defensive coach, that he parks the bus, which may be true for certain seasons, but how has he got the Premier League goal-scoring record and La Liga goal-scoring record if he's so defensive? Hmm. That's a little bit of a myth. Uh, in my opinion. Also, there's this um, misconception that obviously he did really bad at Chelsea this year, so maybe he's not up for the task. Do people still say that about Jürgen Klopp? Because he didn't have the best season at Borussia Dortmund, but he's still regarded as a very, very top coach, and that would be the same with Mourinho. The Chelsea result against Sunderland kind of proved that the players still had the quality, but they just wanted him out for whatever reason, particularly Cesc Fabregas, and, uh, well, a corner reports Eden Hazard and Diego Costa. But there are many reasons for hiring Mourinho. People also say, why would we want a short-term replacement? Now, you look in the world of football, there's not really any longevity anymore. We're probably never going to see a manager like Sir Alex Ferguson, or even Arsene Wenger again. All right, I, I, Arsene Wenger has a lot of flaws. He hasn't won a lot in the last 12 years, bar two FA Cups. But you have to admire his longevity. That is something that not a lot of managers have been able to do. We're probably not going to see that again in the Premier League era for a while at least. So I wouldn't mind Mourinho if it was only two years, three years, something like that. Because he's a, he's a manager that does it instantly. And it's not like Louis van Gaal who did it in the 90s. He's done it very recently. He won the Premier League about 150 days ago. All right, So it's not as though he's not he hasn't won in years and years and years. And uh, it would be a risk. Of course, any manager would be a risk. Would he be able to, you know, manage the, the dressing room correctly? Would he be able to imply, um, implement his system quickly? What would the problems with Juan Mata be? Would he kick him out again? Or would he just see him in a different system, a different team, and give him another chance? I'm sure he would. I don't think he's got anything against the player. It was just he didn't think he uh, fitted the Chelsea system. As we, as we know, Juan Mata hasn't been amazing this season, but he does track back a little bit more than he did for Chelsea. Last season, he was very good, and the first six months when we signed him, he was good. But anyway, forgetting that, Mourinho obviously has a few flaws, um, but to be honest, an another thing, he's very arrogant. Of course he is, but some of our most loved uh, players and managers have been. Stalin Ferguson wasn't exactly uh, you know, a light-hearted guy, was he? We've got uh, Eric Cantona, a, a lovely chap, um, Roy Keane, Rio Ferdinand, Nemanja Vidic. Like, we've got so many arrogant, what you would, you would eat some, you would even call like kind of, well, not really thugs, but you know what I mean? Like, they, they've got that personality, that strong minded personality. And that's what we loved at United. Mourinho's got that, all right? He, he'd be able to take care of the media, no trouble. He wouldn't mind if he was getting a 50 grand fine. And I've said to a really good friend of mine who's a Chelsea fan, I've always firmly believed, and this isn't me just saying it now, I might have even tweeted out, that Jose Mourinho is the best current manager in the world, behind Sir Alex Ferguson, who's retired, so now he is the best manager in the world currently. 
And I firmly believe that. And I've said that before. I said Carlo Angelo is probably second going off what he's done. And Pep Guardiola third. The thing is, I love Pep Guardiola. He's, a, he's an unbelievably successful manager. And unfortunately, he'll bring major success to Manchester City. But I think he will go to City. But he's also had it handed on a plate, kind of. Mourinho has done it with teams like Porto, Inter. So... It's not as though he's had everything handed to him on a silver platter. Don't get me wrong, Pep Guardiola is still world class and he'll work wonders with Manchester City. But that's another reason why we need Mourinho. We need someone who's got the capability to go up against Pep Guardiola. Imagine the Manchester derby. You've got Pep Guardiola on the blue side, Jose Mourinho on the red side. That would be fantastic. It would be a bit like the El Clasico again. Obviously, it wouldn't be as big because of all the players and everything. But it would be Real Madrid versus Barcelona for the fact that they've managed... Both teams and they have that em enmity. I would, uh, I would say. But yeah, there's so many. Um, there's one more, one more point I'm going to go through. But there's so many more, and that would be transfers. A lot of players would love to play under Jose Mourinho. That's without a doubt. All right, so it'd be easier getting these players. That would probably put an end to the endless rumors of Ronaldo, though, because I don't think um, Ronaldo particularly gets on with Jose Mourinho that much. So, you know, we'd look at other targets, but. His favourite targets for Chelsea, and maybe Abramovich wanted his own targets. He did that the last time he was at Chelsea, but I think he gave Mourinho a little bit more freedom, but Mourinho still wasn't 100% happy with some of the transfers. But the ones that Mourinho wanted were Antoine Griezmann, who I really want, and John Stones, who, you know, yes, he's got his flaws, but he's young, and one thing's for sure, our club wouldn't care what the hell we paid. We proved that with Anthony Martial. So if Mourinho wants them, Mourinho will get them. That's something our club gives the manager. 100% control of transfers. And I'm sure Jose Mourinho would be delighted with that. There's rumours that it is his favourite job. So basically, it would just be us as a club that would fuck it up. All right? If Mourinho doesn't join United, then it means that for whatever reason, our dumb club doesn't want him or didn't. Um, give him a chance and all that. But personally, I think Mourinho will become the next manager. And I, for one, 100% firmly believe he's the right choice. And I really want him at Manchester United. Am I wrong? Am I right? What's your opinion? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video. And yeah, peace.